what's steaming, dreamers. So by now you guys are probably back from winter break. You're hitting the books again. Sorry to hear that, but fret not, because in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my super top secret, fantastically amazing library hot chocolate recipe. That is S-T-S-F-A-L-H-C for short. There'll also be a side of science because why not learn something? So sit back, grab a mug of the good stuff, and let's get started. So here's what you will need. A nice mug, some hot chocolate mix, some hot water, parental assistance so that you're safe around the hot water, an apron, a spoon to stir everything with, and of course, the secret ingredient. Now, I have none of that stuff around me right now, so I'm gonna go get all of that ready. While I do, I'm gonna let voiceover Kyle tell you a little bit about why we decided to do a steam video about hot chocolate. Why? Because hot chocolate tastes really good. Yes, that's true, and... It tastes really, really good, especially when it's cold out and you have marshmallows to go in it. this is a steam video, you're supposed to help us learn something. What exactly did you have in mind? Because hot chocolate is a really interesting topic that we can talk at length about. I don't know, something historical, sciencey. Just make it quick, otherwise there won't be enough time for my secret ingredient. <sighs> Fine, let's put 90 seconds on the clock. Chocolate drinks have their origin in Mexico. There are records dating back to two and a half thousand years ago that have Mayans crushing cocoa seeds, cornmeal, and chili peppers to mix them with water. The drink was apparently a staple among all peoples, rich and poor. But if you had a lot of wealth or were a royal, you had a special cocoa drinking mug that was bigger and shinier than everyone else's. Some nobles were even buried with their hot cocoa mugs. Except Mayan chocolate drinks weren't served hot, their drink was cold chocolate. It was the Spanish who started heating up their cocoa mixtures. When Cortez brought cocoa beans to Europe in the early 1500s, the drink caught on, but particularly with the Spanish upper class. It was their take on the drink that moved it more toward traditional hot chocolate, as they started heating the water, adding sugar, and removing chili peppers. Once the drink broke into London in the 1700s, it really made a splash. They started making chocolate houses, cafes that acted a lot like Starbucks, where expensive and tasty hot cocoa was made. It was around the same time that Hans Sloan brought over the idea of using milk instead of water from Jamaica. And throughout history, different cultures have made their own twists on the art of hot chocolate making, from Belgian hot chocolate that's as famous as regular Belgian chocolate, to thick chocolate calda in Italy, to frothy Filipino treats like zoccolate. Sorry for butchering that. But that's not why we decided to make a hot chocolate video. My reasoning starts long ago in a distant land, or last week when I looked online and saw that my coworkers were allowed to drink hot chocolate on the job and I didn't get any. Just kidding, it was a wonderful video. But the real reason I wanted to look into hot chocolate was because I learned that the Mayans made their hot chocolate cold. How many of times have you had a hankering for some hot chocolate only to step outside and feel the blast of Florida heat hitting you in the face? A million times, I'm sure. And in Florida, where we only get two real months of really cold weather, I wanted to see if it was possible to make hot chocolate available to us year round, which means making it chilly. I know, I know, I'm breaking the first rule of the Polar Express, which is to never, ever let it cool. But you know what? They were on a chilly train on the way to the North Pole, and we live in Florida, so I think it's fair, at least this time, to see if it's even possible to make hot chocolate cold again. So let's do a little experiment to see just how important the hot part of hot chocolate is, and more importantly, to see if we can make hot chocolate cold so it can be enjoyed in summer months. Isn't cold chocolate just chocolate milk? No, it's cold chocolate. Here comes the science. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with- What? Oh, we're not- we're not allowed to do that? Make up something new. Okay, um... Hey, what's up guys? This is Cooking with Kyle. And this week we're going to be cooking some cold chocolate. But of course, not right away, because we're going to have to figure out how regular hot chocolate does as far as cooking. So we'll start by grabbing a glass mug. It's easier to see. Put your hot cocoa mixture into the mug and add some hot water that you've boiled in your kettle beforehand. Of course, don't forget to start your timer and vigorously stir. You're going to be measuring the time that it takes for regular hot chocolate 
to completely dissolve in the hot water. Stop the clock. We got 28 seconds and we have a taste test. Tastes like unsweetened hot chocolate. Let's go dump that out. And we're back with a clean mug once again. So we're gonna try the same experiment, this time with some water that I chilled beforehand. Again, add your hot cocoa mixture to your mug, put about eight ounces of water into the mug, start your timer, and stir. And stir. And continue to stir for a long, long time. You might even want to meditate on your life. How did you get here? Stirring cold chocolate. You probably could have been a lawyer or a doctor. Yeah, your mom wanted you to be a doctor. But here you are, stirring cold chocolate in a mug on the internet. And if you're anything like me, after about two minutes of stirring, you're completely bored of this process. So you stop the clock and you look and see that there are still giant chunks of chocolate left over in your fancy chocolate mug. It does not look appetizing at all, and you're very disappointed in the science experiment. Just to double check the clock, after two minutes and about five seconds of stirring, still no cocoa. So we go dump this atrocity out in the garbage. Hmm. So it seems like cool chocolate takes longer to dissolve than hot chocolate. Voice over Kyle. Yes? Explain. Sure. So as you may or may not know, everything in the world is made up of matter, except for antimatter. Anyway, this matter is composed of atoms. Atoms are the building blocks of the universe. Everything is made out of them, including hot chocolate. These atoms have a tendency to stick together, creating what are known as molecules. When atoms bond together in different arrangements, they can make any number of things, like diamonds, oxygen, or chocolate. They're like Lego bricks. Now the bonds that hold the different molecules together all have different strengths. Diamond bonds are strong and hard to break. Same with certain metals and other gems. One way to think about bonds is that some require high energy to break and others require low energy. So if you have a bond that you want to break into small pieces, like some hot chocolate you want to turn into powder, you need a lot of energy. Mechanical energy is the energy produced by the motion of something, so using a spoon to help stir the powder in the liquid helps break down the molecules. But we used a spoon on both cold and hot chocolate. So where does the energy come from that helps hot chocolate dissolve faster than cold chocolate? Why the heat, of course. Dissolving things in hot water is way easier because the energy necessary to break down the molecules into smaller pieces is present in the heat of the water. So what you're saying is, cold chocolate is possible, it just takes longer to make than hot chocolate, right? Exactly. Well, I'm impatient, so I can't have that. I guess the Polar Express was right, you should never, ever let your hot cocoa cool. Speaking of which, I haven't shared with you guys my secret ingredient yet, so let's show you guys that. You'll need all the same stuff as before, except you'll also need the secret ingredient. Add cocoa powder to your mug and go ahead and add a little water so that you have a goopy consistency. Then add two tablespoons of Nutella to your goop and add more water till you're eight to 10 ounces full. Add a pinch of salt to taste and you're done. You can also add sugar and marshmallows to decorate or taste however you want. And there you go. See, hot chocolate's pretty cool and so is the science of dissolving things. And it's no secret that Nutella is delicious, but it was the secret ingredient to this hot chocolate. I actually learned about it in a book called Hot Chocolate by Michael Turbach. Um, it's a really nice book. It's got 60 recipes for hot chocolate and it's available through the library system. So if you wanna learn how to make more hot chocolate recipes, definitely give it a look. I'll leave a link to it in the description. If you want more cool, sciencey hot chocolate goodness, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and definitely follow us on Facebook Send us all your pictures of awesome and delicious winter hot chocolate. We'd love to see them. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Is there food in the next video? No, the next one's about invisible ink. Edible invisible ink? I guess. Perfect. Count me in. Hope to see you there too. That's my S-T-S-F-A-L-H-C. Who's calling me?